What's up, y'all? Welcome to the very first episode of the Actor Podcast. Now, for the first episode, I had to bring my family in. This this guy is one of the dopest actors I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. I've known him since we were kids. We went to the same church. Like, we've been click tight since we were knee high to grasshoppers. So... Toby, yeah, my man, what's going on, cuzzo? What's up, man? What up, cuz? I'm chilling, man. Life is life is dope, man. I didn't know I was the very first one, man. I'm um, I'm excited, man. Yeah, Thank you. You're the genesis, you're the beginning. You you starting it off. You starting it off. Right on, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad to be here. Uh, but yeah, life is dope, cuz. I'm I'm cooling. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So you have been acting forever like how Mm -hmm. started (laughs) at all because i remember we were kids and i was like this dude is he's dope with it he's really into this acting thing like how did you start what was it an accident how how did i start man um i think i started out in, in commercials like it was commercials when i was like young and um I started, I was getting attention just from like being in, in elementary school. And they was like, man, I saw you on, um, I saw you on a Huntsville, um, come to Huntsville Space and Rocket Center commercial. And like the kids would tell me that. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, I don't think I really got into it though until like, like something happened in third grade where I was interested in acting. And like I, I played the Big Bad Wolf and I was like, oh, this is cool. But it was all about attention at that point. But I didn't really get into it for real, man, until um, probably like eighth grade. And that's when I was like, I think I'm good at this. But it wasn't working out. Like I got into it because um, I was like, I like doing this. I like putting on different hats and stuff. But it, I wasn't like good at it then. Like I was really like I wasn't getting cast in anything. But I was just like I think I'm gonna do this. <laughs> but it's been like like you said, man, all my life, man. And I was like, um, just unique at it. That's what's up. The the two fondest memories that I've got of you when we were kids. Number one was this little sketch that we did at church where you were one of mankind's. Do you remember that? No. You don't remember that? Where was it? Oh, dude, it was it was like for a Christmas it was like a Christmas program or something. Was it that boxing thing we did? Like it was a boxing? It wasn't like that. it was a boxing oh, ring? Now that you brought oh. that up, I remember that too. That was great. That's the only oh, thing I remember. What was mankind? No, I want to hear it. Tell me about it. Tell me about this. Right. We were everybody was like a different Christmas song trying to cheer this person up or like bring them the Christmas spirit. And you were one of four people that came in and you're like, I am mankind. I, it was like this really gloom and doom story, but everybody else was just kind of like, yeah, I'm mankind and blah, 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 blah. You were up on stage. You had this floor length Cape and you're like, <laughs> I am mankind. I was <laughs> extra. I was extra as hell. <laughs> that, look, that made all of us look like super amateurs, but it was really cool to see you really committed to it. And hmm. then as time went on, I was like, "Yeah, I knew that was going to happen." Yep, I knew that was going to be an actor because way back in the day, he did his thing. Now the other one was when you did no exit. At Asphalt. Oh yeah, bro. That no exit. I remember that. I remember that. I, I I remember I don't remember like the play, but I remember um I remember we had conversations about this. Cause that play was like that play was amazing. With Jean so Jean Genet or something like that. Yeah. Jean Paul Chartre, yeah. Oh, and that's his name. I, Look. I had a plan to to uh direct it when I was in college. Didn't work out. But one of these days I am going to do no exit and dude available. Expect a phone call. Dude, I would love that. Like that that play what like that that cause it was like three people in hell or something like that. And yeah. like hell was and essentially just, other people. Each other crazy. They're all <laughs> you know I love that dog. and the you know, the little man with the horns and the tail, but hell was themselves. And I was like, this is so right. Cool. Yeah, that was fly. That that really stuck with me 
like once I once I started acting, I was like, no exit. That's like the gold standard. <laughs> no, you got me. You made me want to pull that one back out, man. Yeah, I, that was I, fly. I find that script for me again. I actually tried to get him a film done version, and. <laughs> His estate told me, nah, we good. We, we don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I like that you tried to do that, though, man, because that's what it's about. Like, try hitting them estates up and like, yeah, I want to do this. And they're like, nah, but you got to ask, man. So maybe, maybe we'll begin some down, sometime down the line. But yeah. All right. So high school, you, you know, you're doing your thing. You went to, you went to UAB, right? I went to UAB for college. Yeah, college. Yeah, yeah. Major high degree. school. I went to uh, ask for a minor. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So you're in college. Are you starting to get cast more and stuff, or is it still kind of struggle? College. Um, I think I was. I think in college, I found my people, man, that I wanted to create with. Um, and so I started getting cast in things, but I was also I was um. I was afraid in college as well. Like I was, I, I remember, I think, I think about this. I remember being afraid to be in um, a Shakespeare play. Um, I was just afraid to do that language, but I started getting a lot of stuff in college, but I started creating in college. Also, I found a the group of people that I wanted to create plays with. I found a, a teacher started to breathe into me about experimental theater, like creating your own, own works and stuff. So that's what I really started doing that. And that's when I think um, my voice started to, I started to understand that I had a voice was in college. And it's like, Oh, I got something to say. That's when I became very interested in like, um, vaudeville and minstrel sea shows and stuff like that. I just started to be like, yo, how did I wanted to figure out how me as a black man in Alabama was able to like be on stage. And that's where all of that stuff started to happen for co in college. Um, but I did, I, I did tune the instrument in college too, like, um, figuring out what was it? Like, I, I remember doing, doing tour groups and we would have to like, go to different schools around and we had, we all made a show and I was like, Oh, this is how I'm going to, how do I keep the audience involved when it's like kids that are like from age, you know, first grade to 10th grade, how do I keep them involved with this show that we're doing? And so we, yeah, that was fun to, to figure that stuff out. I think grad school though is when I really was like, Oh, this is hard. This is uh, acting is is not easy. <laughs> uh, I have to and I went to, yeah, I got to work at it. I went to grad school in San Francisco at um, American Conservatory Theater, and that's when I was like, and I met uh, a lot of my collaborators, my friends that I collaborate with today. I met some of them, and I was like, oh if we want to do this, we really got to, got to dig deep into the, the human condition. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I really got to be willing to risk some, some things about myself, be really willing to tell a real story about myself. So. So how did you go from theater into television or was it kind of going on at the same time? Or did you just be like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave theater for the back burner and do something different. No, man, actually it was, I think it was out of necessity. It was like, I had, cause I, I this, this is truly what happened. So I was negotiating a contract for theater in Marin and I, I had just moved back to Los Angeles. Like me and my wife had just got married and I was like, I was working at this karate studio and I always knew that I wanted to do theater. I mean, I, I wanted to do film and television. I just didn't know how it was going to happen. Like I moved to California. I was like, I wanted to get to LA, but I was like, San Francisco is the closest I can get. Let me go to grad school over there. Then I was like, all right, now I'm about to move to LA. I've always wanted to do TV and film, but theater is my foundation. Like that's the thing that I love. That's what I, I always was taught that great, TV and film actors know how to do theater well. And so that was my goal to be like, oh, I'm about to, I'm a master theater and then I'm gonna step over. But I'm negotiating, this is like 2012 or something like that. I'm negotiating a contract for a theater show. And I'm doing all this negotiation myself, but I had just got married and I was like, I can't afford to have my wife and like actually feel like I'm doing something off of this theater contract. And I was like, I negotiated with the the production um, theater, the producing theater, so they can give me more money. 
And I was so excited. Like, this is my first time, like, actually speaking up for myself and being like, I can't take this. And it's like, this is what they gave me. And I was like, I want more. And the producer didn't want to do it at first. And I love, this is Jason Minadakis. I love Jason Minadakis at Marin Theater. One of the dopest directors, I think, on the West Coast. Um, he was like, I can't do that, Toby. We ain't got no money. And I was like, uh, I can't do this show then, dog. And he was like, you know what? Let me figure it out. He went back. Um, and while I'm in L.A., I'm in L.A. and I wanted to go back up to San Francisco to do this play. He went back. He said, man, I talked to some people. I got this money, man. We're going to make this happen for you. I was like, great. The next week. I had put an audition out uh, with an agency um, with, a, with, with some casting directors and they were like, we want to see you. Um, we want you to go straight to producers. And this is for the show that I got on um, Walk the Prank. Uh, that was my first Disney show, my first my first TV gig ever in L.A. And he was like, um, they was like, we want to we want to, we want to see you. They was like, we're going to hire you for this show. And so I had wait, to wait, call. Wait, hold on, time out. Time out. <laughs> the prank was your first gig in L.A. That's my first gig in L.A. It was also my first audition, my first <laughs> real audition that I went I on in L.A. Um, was also I ended up booking it. And like they they were like, bro. And the manager that I had at the time, he was like, this never happens, dog. He was like, this your first audition for real? I was like, it's my first one, man. I was like, I told you, just get me in a room, man. I'm going to try to do my thing. So it's my first one. I go straight to I go straight to producer. They're like, they want to hire you. And so, and I was like, but I got this thing, man, that I just negotiated. But I've always wanted to do TV and film. Yeah. And so he was like, my manager, he told me, he was like, this is going to change your life. Or you can go back to what you're doing. Now, I never thought that this was going to change my life. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, the way my goal set up, because you really got to like, it got to change my life. The way my goals are set up, I need something that's going to come in. They'd be like, boom, we putting you right here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I understood what he was saying. And so he was like, um, he was like, so what you going to do? I had to call Jason, man. It was one of the hardest conversations I had. Um, at that point in my life, I was like, hey, man, I know you did all of this stuff for me, but I got to I got to go over here and try to see what's happening. And he was like, what? And he was like, at first he was upset. He was like, Toby, man, we need you in this show. And I was like, I know, man. And I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this show that I'm about to do, what it's going to be. But what it's doing is like it's going to give me an opportunity to um you know, feed my wife, <laughs> like take my wife out on a date. You know what I'm saying? And so at first he was like, no. And then he was like, I understand. He was like, I'll find somebody else. He was like, I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. And so that's really how my TV career started. Like I was like negotiating everything, man. Even, even before that, I'm always, I've always been about the theater. I remember doing Showcase, man. And right after Showcase, I was getting hit up by ABC, CBS, Fox hit me up, DreamWorks hit me up. And everybody was like, yo, we want to meet you. And I was like, hmm, I'm doing a show with Terrell McCraney in the Bay Area. And I'm going to go back and do a theater show. Looking back, I think I did the right thing. But also looking back, I was like, I I was so just like I I had a goal of hitting every theater in the Bay Area. Yeah. And so I was like, let me do that before I start just jumping into stuff. Um I'm glad I did it, but um I wonder, I mean I do wonder like what would have happened if I would have said yes at that point. I think a lot of stuff would have been off for me though. That's what's up. Wow. Man, that's yeah, the stories like that don't happen. It's like, yep, you just show up and like here I am throw me the money it's like it, it, no nobody happens that way but that's dope like dude i didn't know that was your first audition that is really dope. that was the first audition my first true aud i mean and i had and excuse me because it was hard i remember i had one agent man it was commercial agent when I first got out here, he kept telling me, he was like, man, it's going to be so great. It was so L.A. He was like, it's going to be great working with you, man. Oh, man, it's going to be so amazing. And I was like, thanks, man. I can't wait. Like, I was like, let's do stuff. And he never sent me out on anything. Oh, <laughs> and then, but he would invite me to like all the parties at the agency. And I remember looking around the agency and I was like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, dog. I was like, who are these people? I was like, I don't see Denzel in this room. Like, <laughs> but, but eventually he told me, he was like, Hey man, he called me in his office. He was like, Hey man, 
I don't really even want to be doing this, dude. I was trying to pay some bills. And I was like, I thank you for telling me, man, but you just wasted like a year of my life. But uh, wow. but he he didn't waste it. He actually was teaching me about the industry. So that's how that's how I look at it. Pulling the silver lining out of the cloud. See? Yep. I got to. That's what's up. So recently, what's been what's been going on? What do you are you still producing stuff or? Yeah, recently I'm in pitch meetings now, man, which is a, a, a exactly on, I feel like it's in process. And in, in, what is the thing in, it's in my momentum, I think. <laughs> it's right in, in line with what I want to be doing. Um, I'm doing pitch meetings, man. I've been writing a lot. Uh, 2020, I, I wrote. Um, I did 20 pitches. I said, by the time this year was over, I'm going to have 20 pitches ready to pitch to um, all the different different networks. So I've been in meetings, man, developing things, pitching my projects. Uh, nothing has, nothing's landed yet, but I mean, we saw what happened with Squid Games. A lot of people going to tell you no, and all you need is just one yes. Yeah, one so uh, just one yes. So I'm just waiting on the yes, man, but um, I'm doing a lot of writing, a lot of pitching, a lot of auditions. Uh, and just waiting to book because getting ready for this baby to come and, you know, just grind, dog. I'm still grinding. That's what's up, man. That's, that's dope. Like, it's it's cool knowing somebody that has been at it for a while and knowing the type of person you are and how – you always you're gonna you're gonna figure it out one way or another. And you've all, you've yeah. always been as like, all right, well, let's do it. Let's figure it out. Let's let's just go. I'm gonna make it woogie boogie, baby. <laughs> it's like you've always been. I I get, I want to say a mentor, but I'm trying to think of another term because I've always been able to say, hey, Toby, uh, I got X, Y, and Z going on. What do you think I should do? Or Hey, Toby, I'm about to do some some headshots. What should I what should I be looking at? And I remember sending you a text like, dude, I don't know what to do for these headshots. And you sent me like 10 different pictures. You were like, take a look at all these. This is what you the kind of direction you should go in, you know, and it matches your skin tone. Like you you broke everything down in this big string of text messages. I was like, wow, I've got really I love it, dog. Like, this, it was so dope. Like you have always been the just like the encouragement person for me in my acting career yeah. as that was one reason why I wanted you to be on the podcast is because I just wanted to talk with you about the craft in another setting and not yeah. just, you know, sending text messages back and forth or, you know, you seeing an Instagram post is like, ah, oh, Toby did this or cool. Eric did that. Cause when you did those videos for my wife's, classes dude yeah yeah they went crazy they I loved did, those videos they're like you know him <laughs> my wife was like yeah my, my husband grew up with him which made her the coolest person in the world because she knew you by proxy so it was like you have a wide reach just mm. You know, being just being you, you've got a wide reach, and so I just want you to know I appreciate what you do for me directly and indirectly. Because I mean, you know, we like I said earlier, we go back to what 10, 11, 12 years old, yeah, Christmas breakfast, and yeah, family. new coming to Bible Church, baby. <laughs> Let's Man. go, game nights, baby, at the crib, dog. Um, because yeah. I received it, I received part of it, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, snow days, everything, man. Um, I receive all of that because, like, I I've always I love. I'm 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 glad that you hit me up and I'm able. I'm I respond like that, man. I I truly, I truly want people to do that for me. You know what I'm saying? I think I would do the same. I I do what I think I would want people to to show me. And it's like if I if you ask a question about this art form, I give it, man. I'm like, oh, boom. Let me try to give it away because I also think that you have a great look and you need to be working in this industry a lot more. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so it's like, yo, try this. This will work for me. And I also know that what worked for me may not work for the for the next person. Um, but any knowledge that I got about this industry, man, I want to share. And that's in I think 
one of my biggest goals and uh, is to move culture. And uh, I, by, by hearing what you're saying, it's like, that's a small way of me doing it. It's like, I want to breathe into other artists, uh, other people that look like me. You ain't got to look like me. I'll still breathe into, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want you to, I want everybody to succeed, but especially us, man, like growing up, I mean, in Alabama, dog, and I know you from, you from like West Virginia too, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you, yeah. But in Alabama, man, I, it wasn't, I ain't have a lot of people that look like me around there that was doing it. And so when, when I see us, man, um, yes, please, let's get this. Let's get this. So thank you, cuz. Oh, so. All right. Now, I got to know what prompted you to start the Blue Minivan podcast. The Blue Minivan. Um, Blue Mini. What prompt? So, so the Blue Minivan is. I talk uh, similar to this. I talk to creatives about journey, man. Um, and what prompted? I uh, 2020, 2020 is truly what prompted it. I was sitting and I was like, I've always loved being around the table in theater and talking about the moments before. Like, what is the moment before we? Um, what is the process of putting this thing together, this play together? And then we get to opening night. Like we do tech in a theater setting. Tech is always very fun for me because that's when things solidify for me and my process. And then opening night is like, oh man, here comes the press. Everybody about to write about it. But then after opening night, I was usually just like, ah, now we just got to keep, keep doing this thing. And so I wanted to create something where we talk about, with those first moments at the table where we talk about process, what got you to your opening night? Because everything else is going to be, we can see everything else. Like I can Google and find everything else, but it's like, how do you get there? How do you get the, how do you get to that point where people be like, dang, this person dope. Um, like who are the people that breathe into you? Like what were the things that affected you? And I know like being on this journey for as long as I have now, I know that you fail a lot. We don't talk about the failures, though. And so in 2020, man, like I, I was talking with a whole group of people about August Wilson plays and the conversations that came out of that cuz were just amazing. And it was just us. It was, like we were on Zoom, people of color, and we were just looking at each other, just like being like being. And, and sometimes one time I remember it was right after uh, the George Floyd stuff happened. We were supposed to be talking about August Wilson, man, but we sat on there for an hour and just cried and just talked about what it is to be a black person. And in essence, we were still doing August Wilson. You know what I'm saying? Like we're still talking about August Wilson. And so um, that's what I was like. I want my goals was to take the my goal was to take the conversation that we have in private and make them public so that now the conversation that we have in private begin to change. And I was like, every time I'd be talking to somebody, I'm like, man, I need to record this. And finally, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm about to record it. I'm recording these. And I let people know. Um, and you remember the blue minivan from back in the day, right? Yes. Y'all had a blue minivan, had, too. We had one, too. Yeah, y'all had yeah. the, uh, the blue goose. Ours was the tank. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, I took something that I, I, I was like, I had to come from myself, man. I took something that was I was once cracked on about. And I was like, let me make, this is a joy for me now. The blue bin, minivan is a part of my journey. Um, I used to get cracked on hard cause like about that blue minivan. And I used to always, I, I was embarrassed, but I never showed it. I don't think in the moment, but now that I, if I look back now, I'm sure people, it was like, yeah, Toby about to cry when he go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. So yeah. Cause I, I remember seeing that post. I was like, Toby's got a podcast. Oh, this is going to be dope. And dude, I'm enjoying it, man. It's uh subscribe. I've got to watch this because you've always been an interesting person. So I was like, well, if this one interesting person is talking to a bunch of people that he finds interesting, I, I've got to at least check it out. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> thank dope, you. Man. That was that was one catalyst for me to quit messing around and start this podcast because I dude I've been sitting on this idea for the longest I'm glad like, you're doing it because imposter syndrome just hit me so bad I was like man I, I ain't really done nothing for real in the industry like no I'm I'm not a guru quote unquote but it was right know, but we all are we're the guru at 
I gotta do it. And it just and you know everybody, man. I remember you know you know the homie Kamal, man. I, I you be and like excuse me, you've been in the scene in Nashville, dog, and like everybody comes through there. Like I think I was just watching uh Kamal's Instagram. He just did um was it Jitney? He did yeah, some. Um Jimmy. he did there yeah. and because you know all of those actors man so yeah I, i'm glad i'm glad Everybody you're doing this Everybody that was on that stage except for maybe like two people i've worked with yeah and, and i'm i mean and i remember you calling me like i know that you wanted that booster role that he got man, but oh, this man. is a part of the journey though you know what i'm saying like because it's been so many roles Man, I, I was just watching Candyman and I was like, dang, y'all, y'all killed it. Y'all, y'all was so amazing in Candyman, dog. And I was like, I ain't auditioned for it in them, but I was like, dang, this dude is fly. And that's how it is. Like, we got to we gotta salute the people that get it because our stuff is coming. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. I mean, shoot, I, I appreciate you gacking with me. Now, I'm not going to make you freestyle because... <laughs> I can't, so I'm not. About to have, <laughs> I'm not about to get embarrassed on my own show, but I, do I... <laughs> have a few questions that I'm going to ask every guest. Nobody is going to be able to not answer the questions. They're not. It's nothing, you know, scary or spooky or anything. But it's a few questions. It's that like rapid have. fire. No, 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 no. You can, you can, oh, you can okay. take the time and think about it. All, All right, right, give so, them to me. What is one? piece of advice that you would give to a fellow actor risk fail risk again that's what i live by um keep trying throw it throw it out there throw it on the wall make some art that was like a lot of pieces with it. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's it's it is one piece with several pieces that make that one piece so you know i i, I got you i know i feel what you're picking up all right, one book that has been influential for your career or for your life or both. Mm. This gives me pause because and my wife would be laughing right now because I don't read, cause <laughs> but I do read. I read a lot. Um, but it's usually plays and scripts and stuff. Uh, so I think one book. It can be a play or a script because I mean they do come in book form, and that that that, that counts. So <laughs> I uh, give me that one last. Let me think about it. Let me keep thinking about it. Asking no. another. Is that the last question? That ain't the last one. Is no, it? it's not the last one. No, no, no. We'll come no, back. No. This it's like Family Feud. We'll come back to that one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Now this this is um something. Tell me something that you find mildly mildly interesting. And so what I mean is it's just something that you just kind of like, oh yeah, that's pretty interesting or that's pretty cool. Like I recently tried shrimp burgers for the first time. Like my wife found them at Trader Joe, and they were delicious. I had never had a shrimp burger. But I was killing them, you know, put a little mm. Asian chili sauce on there. And, you know, it was it was cool. So it's just something that you find interesting. It's just like, oh, OK, yeah, it's nothing that's groundbreaking, but it's just mildly interesting. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. These are good. Um, I find mildly interesting. Well, I'm, I guess I'm fascinated right now with, with pregnancy, man, like, because we're about to have this baby. And I still think it's really strange that a child can grow inside of a woman, man. Like, I am very fascinated and interested in how that happens. Um, and like, there's like, like, there's a human inside of my wife right now. And I just, I, I truly can't comprehend it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's. it's just, it's weird, it man. Weird. Like <laughs> it is what it is. I'm like, how, how did this happen? And I'm like, uh, and I look at it. I'm like, wow. So that's that's something that um that's in the moment. Uh, what is there anything else? Um, oh, I actually did have this today. 
and I, I and this is this is connected to 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 babies and life and stuff. But I was like, how is my child like she's four? I was like, how is my child in the back like singing stuff and like. I was like, how is it that her brain then picked up how to learn language? And and then I think about myself and I was like, I wonder if my mom still looks at me and is like, how did he know how to talk like this? <laughs> it's like those things are very interesting to me, man. I don't know if it's like existential. Maybe it's not that existential, but how the brain can do stuff, man. Um, I'm fascinated about the brain and how it works. That's what's up. Are we back to the book question now? We back, we back to the book. Back to you know what? This this may not be. Uh, this is not going to be transcendent in any way. But <laughs> I recently just read the Halloween Tree. It's a children's book, and the reason that I find this profound to me is that this tree was was. It was grown in a tree that was full of trees for Christmas. And uh, when Christmas time came, he never wanted to be picked. This tree was like, I don't want to be picked. I don't like lights. I don't like decorations. I don't like people. Um, And so this tree was alone for a lot of its life because Christmas came and all of the people, all of the, the families picked the Christmas trees. And he was right there. He just kept growing, kept growing. And eventually, like, the tree grew to be really ugly because it never wanted to be around people. Mm. And so it was like, it, whenever it grew its roots, it'd be like, I'm going to do, I'm going to grow my roots and it's going to be real knotty. And I don't want, want nobody, but people still love this tree. People come in and jump on this tree and hang out on the tree. And they were about to cut the tree down one day. Cause it was like, this tree is really ugly. The tree, then the children around it was like, no, I want to keep this tree. Let's put lights on it for Halloween. Let's put a, a pumpkin up there. Let's put a jack o' lantern. Let's put cats and stuff on there. And eventually the tree realized that I like lights. I like decorations. I'm just a Halloween tree. I'm not a Christmas tree. And I just thought that was so beautiful to just be like, oh, this is. And I think sometimes I want to be a Christmas tree, but really I'm just a. Because I think I'm a. I'm a. <laughs> I think I'm a summer tree or something like that. I think I'm a, a Valentine tree. I grow very uniquely. And it's like, let me just understand my space. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me live in my space. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like know your lane. Yeah. But we all like, we all think that we want to be Christmas trees. But the Halloween tree was good being it. Being comfortable in, in your uniqueness. Woo! What kind of I'm a that's that's a word. I'm an April tree or something. I don't know. I'm some kind of tree. <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, well, well, Toby again, dude. I really appreciate you hopping on here. Thank you, man. Cutting it up with me for a few minutes. I appreciate you, man. I'm very, very thankful to be here. On a another scale or another time, but I got to get Chanel on here too. When she's oh for sure she got some dope stuff man about to I about know to happen she's got some dope stories and she'll probably yeah. have a few that will embarrass you that I'll definitely oh yeah make because <laughs> <laughs> she she probably ain't gonna talk about me she go she ain't gonna talk about me she'll be like oh so this is all about me let's go <laughs> uh but I'm sure she'd love to all right so if Folks want to find you on social media and things like that. We got the Instagrams, the Twitters, the the YouTubes. Uh, IG, Toby Wyndham, holla at me. I don't use none of the other stuff. That's what's up. But you can follow it. <laughs> so famous. Because I kind of use the other stuff. I'm too famous. I'm Toby Wyndham. <laughs> <Wendell. laughs> I, I, dude, I, I wish I was like that. I need more of that. <laughs> Oh shoot! Well, again, cuz I appreciate you, and appreciate it, man. Tell the wife and the the young daughter hello for me, and the the soon to be born. I got to have pictures because for sure, I got Uncle you. Eric will, you know, send a little gift, something. I appreciate it, man. Something. I I drop you the uh, the baby list. That's what's up. Yeah. Baby list is always good. That way I ain't got to guess what to get. It's like, cool. I I'm know what they're actually looking for. I don't have to send them nothing that they don't want or don't need. 
word. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it, cuz. All right. Well, that is it. Uh, dang, I was about to say something profound and forgot what I was going to say. So, <laughs> <I'm just> gonna, <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm going to say something profound. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it at thank you again and appreciate you. That's that's all I got. It's all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, cuz. Okay, that is a wrap on the first episode of the Actor Podcast. Uh, again, huge thanks to Toby for uh, taking time out of his extremely busy schedule to talk with me. Um, he's been just a, a true inspiration in my career. And as I mentioned, I, I look at him as a mentor, but also as a peer, uh, just because we've known each other for so long. And you know, we, we kind of feed off of each other's energy, even though we are geographically distanced from each other. Um, so I will put a, a link to his Instagram in the show notes. Be sure to give Toby a follow. Uh, he puts out some really dope content. And also make sure to subscribe to his podcast, The Blue Minivan, which I will also link to in the show notes. It's a great podcast that you should definitely take a look at or take a listen to. Um be sure to like and subscribe to the actor podcast on your favorite podcast platform and also follow us on social media the uh, username for instagram twitter and facebook is the actor podcast and also subscribe to us on youtube i'll see you guys in the next episode take it easy <laughs>